Welcome to Don't Do Disney Without Us. My name is Daniel. And my name is Zach. And welcome back to our show. It's a little show we like to do about all things in the Disney universe, including the streaming services, the television networks, question mark, uh, the movies, the, uh, the, the music, the feel, the sound, the smells, uh, pretty much uh, everything. Of, of cotton? Yeah. Everything, <laughs> everything except the sports. Because, uh, you know, we don't talk about sports. Very Except much. when we run. Except when we run, which uh, is getting harder and harder to do these days. But uh, we'll talk about that. Every time I do it, I seem to injure myself. I mean, it's it's harder and harder to get into Disney races. <laughs> uh, I think we even made a reference to this on the last podcast. We did. Yeah, it's we it's, did. it's just very difficult. To, We're not doing uh, princess. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think what we were going to talk about today is you wanted to talk about um, Disney resellers. Yes. And um, I, I got to move my thing here because I sound like kind of tenny. Um, t- t- anyway. Tenny? Tenny. Like the number tenny? Tenny. Tenny. Who was it that used to get mad at me? Was it Alyssa Lefferson Alyssa. that if I um, said pen? Yes. Those are pins. They are not pens. You don't write with them. Unless I'm you're going to stab yourself and write in blood. I'm Southern. They're just pans. They're just pans. Tri- Trade and pans. Trade and pans. Uh, anyway, uh, well, now I'm stuck in that. Um, all right. So you want to talk about resellers, which you want to talk about. But I, I ran across this thing on TikTok the other day, and I wanted to do one of those things that the kids do nowadays. Oh, the, oh a reaction video? The live react. I mean, it's been around as long as YouTube has been around. But, you know, uh, I, I wanted to to play this here for you. So I'm, let me let me cue it up here. Um, I'll figure out how to overlay the video here if you're watching on the video Uh the, the video version of the podcast. Of the podcast. So this is a, a thing I ran across on TikTok and it just, it, it, it brought up so many questions. So here, I, I want you okay. to, to live react to this. Here we go. I, I can't hear him. Lack of action since his return to Disney. Right. But I'm going to try. All right. Let's, let's start that again. <laughs> let's start that again. Here we go. I can't express enough my disappointment with Bob Iger and his lack of action since his return to Disney. But I'm going to try. Last week, he made headlines for all the wrong reasons with his comments about the ongoing WGA and SAG after strikes while at a billionaire's retreat. It's infuriating to see him downplay the concerns of hardworking professionals who make the magic happen on screen. You know what? You know what? You know what's maddening is that everyone just assumes that he was talking about financial stuff there as opposed to the other things that they are in a negotiating uh, standstill with. I feel very strongly about this from things that I have read and things that I have heard that one of the major sticking points right now is the studios and use of AI and they are, uh, the unions are adamant that there is to be no use of AI. I firmly believe that is what Bob Iger was saying when he said that, you know, there are some unreasonable positions. You can't just tell studios, Hey, here's this new tool that does a lot of cool things. Uh, you just can't use it at all. Right. It, 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 and negotiation means, okay, let's, let's figure out how to use this new tool while, you know, still supporting the, the, the ecosystem that we have. Anyway, I, everyone just assumes that they're talking about money because everyone immediately jumps to the fact that it's a billionaire's conference and that Bob Iger makes $54 million a year, whatever. It's like, I don't think, at least from everything I've heard from the, uh, the union representatives on TV, right? I'm not, I haven't been following this that closely, but they haven't been talking about, uh, money, they, what they have been out complaining about is AI and deep fakes. That's, that's what they've been complaining about. So anyway, let's just move on here. Oh, do I get to say anything there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Go this ahead. was my reaction. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I, you're right. The, the, the comments that were made were not specific to what demands Bob Iger thinks are unreasonable. I, however, don't think it's unreasonable to also include pay in that because Bob Iger makes $24 million a year and was at a billionaire's conference and Disney Disney writers and actors and cast members yeah. are but, incredibly but he underpaid. Never, but, but Bob Iger never said what the money that they're asking for is unreasonable. He said they have some demands that are unreasonable. And yes, the only and demands that they have are the AI things. No, money is a part of this conversation. But money is not a demand. That's a negotiation. I mean, that's just a standard union negotiation. Yeah, thing. We're, Regardless, none of us know. Right. Be, because there were there was no specifics. You, he, 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 you can't. I don't know. Because you, there are no you, specifics. Because there are no specifics, you have to make a judgment on everything that's being talked about, not just what you want 
Correct. And that's my complaint with this guy is that he, he has set up his argument to be Bob Iger was talking about money. It was disgusting for a billionaire to talk about not paying his people more money at a retreat, which he doesn't know. No, he doesn't. But that's not an untrue statement it's, at it, all. But it's a red herring because he doesn't know that that was the sticking point that Bob Iger was talking about. Is what I'm yes, and neither do you and neither no, do I. No, but I'm not making does... the assertion that Bob Iger is, is the, made a disgusting comment. I'm saying, let's wait. Let's hear what the, what the whole story is. Anyway, moving on. Don't forget his arrogant stance on park prices not being an issue for him. Seriously? Maybe for him, but for countless fans and families, the rising costs have become a real barrier to enjoying the Disney experience that everyone used to love. What's even more frustrating, everyone used to love. Plenty of people still love it. I don't disagree that park prices are a bit much at okay. all. But you and I have talked many times about this, right? Uh, you have a finite resource. You, you, you know, attendance at the, at the theme parks is a finite resource. Uh, that gets overwhelmed. So the only two levers that they can pull there are increase the price to go in to control the crowds or turn people away at the gate. One of them is a, is a uh, much worse PR problem than the other. Turning people away at the gate, especially people that have paid thousands of dollars to stay in your hotels and be there for their, their uh, vacation, that's a horrible thing as opposed to I'm um, raising the prices that you knew that ahead of time before you spent the money. So I feel, you know, it, uh, yeah, I don't, I would love it if Disney were free for everyone, but that's just not realistic, right? Then no one would ever get into Disney unless you right. showed up there at 2 a.m. in the morning and camped out, right? To be one of the first people through the door, right? So go ahead. Is how in just seven months, Disney's stock has continued to plummet. It's like he's lost touch with what made the company so successful in the first place. Box office bombs have become the new norm, and it's not just about the pandemic. It's about the lack of fresh and captivating content. And let's... Okay. We touched on this last week. We and, did. Well, not last week, on our last podcast, because... Okay. <sighs> yes? He's... Unfortunately, box office bombs kind of have become the norm with a mm -hmm. lot of Disney and Disney adjacent content recently with a couple outliers. Yeah. But and, and it's, that's not just a, Disney. it's not just Disney. Yeah. The, the movies that have bombed have mostly been good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, which we've talked the, about. The, the, this is show. a this yeah. is a movie industry problem, not a Disney specific problem. Yeah, this is a theater problem, basically. Although. Barbenheimer is looking like it's going to take the th the theaters by storm this weekend. Even so, regardless of what things along those lines go, uh, again, he's he's drawing a direct relationship. These movies bombed, the stock price went down, and that's not exactly how that works. That's uh, you know, people invest in the stock market on Disney aren't like paying attention necessarily to what the latest uh, movie returns are. They're looking at the health of the company as a whole, uh, what their plans are, what their returns are, things like that, right? So uh, the movies that Disney puts out into the theater, uh, while didn't perform as well as they wanted to, at least so far, unless I am missing something, at least so far, most of them have made all their money back. They didn't cost the company. They didn't make profits for them, but they didn't necessarily cost the company too I much money. I don't know all the numbers in yeah. question, but I know Elemental is no longer Pixar's, Pixar's? Mm -hmm. Pixar's biggest flop. <laughs> I think that is now Lightyear. Oh. Um, but yeah, yeah, Elemental is still a flop, but mm -hmm. it is not right. as big of one. Right. And it looks and like it made his it, money back. It, it's got legs. Yeah. Looks like it made in funny back. So uh, anyway, I, I just, all right, moving on. Talk about the park experience. It's still lackluster and feels like they're just nickel and diming us. Rides are always breaking down. The park reservation system is a nightmare. And don't even get me started on the tiered ticket pricing. All we Okay, I want to get started on the tiered ticket pricing. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on, on that? He's saying that the, the parks are uh, a maintenance nightmare, uh, that they're nickel and diming us to death. And um, what was the last thing that, that he just said? Oh, the tiered pricing. So uh, having different price tickets based off of how busy that season is going to be. Right. Welcome to the way almost everything is priced. Mm -hmm. Everything is priced based on demand now. And it, so it, tiered price, you're not going to escape tiered pricing, sir. Right. I'm sorry. Um, maintenance nightmare. I, we haven't 
been to the parks Mm -hmm. like for ride purposes probably since race weekend in april Mm -hmm. we usually go for dinner and fireworks so we don't tend to ride a lot of rides but when we do knock on wood things haven't broken down I, i have seen a lot of reports of of particular attractions breaking down more often and Mm -hmm. maintenance not being what it used to be. So I don't, I I can't say in my personal experience, but for some, I I don't know. I feel like it's, it's not a nightmare, but it's probably not as good as it could be. I think he's going to call out Indiana Jones here in just a second, but the, the, you know what? You mean the ride that breaks down and just never comes back up ever? Right. Even after a month's long refurbishment. And we have talked to some people that had some knowledge of that ride and said it was badly engineered from the beginning, right? It's like, I don't know that there are are enough mechanics you could throw at that to keep, you know, working on hydraulic systems that are just prone to break down. And if you have a car that breaks down in the middle of the ride, what are your options to get it back in? Or say Haunted Mansion or any of the dark rides where if you drop a speck of dust in between the cars, it jams. I also feel like this is very anecdotal right you're you're talking about attractions that operate 365 days a year uh uh, for the most part right they they may go down for short refurb periods periods or whatever but for the most part these rides are running every single day and they have been for over 50 years right so uh the haunted mansion in florida all of them but no but haunted mansion in both coasts right The, the haunted mansion has been operating every single day for you know uh 365 days. I guess California gets to take theirs down for like a month to, re- to re-scan you know it or whatever. I'm changing my villain. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's fin- we're finishing up here with this thing. Uh, his- what we want is a lowered and fair flat rate to enter the parks. Is that too much to ask? Actually, yeah, it is. And that's, that's kind of the, the whole reason that I wanted the reaction on this video. Uh, was that's, that's just dumb business. And this guy on TikTok does not have a business background. He is a med student uh, who, who makes TikToks where he comments on things. But his comment is, I just found it to be so ridiculous. The comment that he's making is, all we want is a lower ticket price. Is that too much to ask? It's like, well, yeah, go back to the demand argument that we had before. If you lower the ticket price, if, if you could get into Disney World for $50 a day, right? Hey, this summer in celebration of Disney's 100th anniversary, we're rolling back prices. You can come into the the kingdom, you know, you can come into our theme parks for the prices they were back in 1972 or something like that. I, the, the parks would be jammed. You wouldn't be able to get into the parks. It's like, you can't do that. It's, it's, it seems like such a simplistic thing to say. It's like, they should just lower prices. Then They should just, they should just lower prices. But that is not how economics work. I mean, that's just not how supply and demand works. Yes. Circling so. back to the thing we said before, even though it's a slow summer, allegedly. Yeah. I mean, People can post screenshots of wait times and pictures of uh, conveniently cropped pictures of lines and whatnot. (laughs) You know, it it is allegedly a slow summer because, you know, we may or may not be teetering on the edge of a recession. So everybody's bracing for uh, not as crowded of a summer. I mean, demand is still there. Disney is still the one of the number one tourist destination. in the country? The Magic Kingdom in Florida is the most heavily attended theme park in the world. And still is. When demand yeah. is that high yeah. and you can't limit capacity, mm-hmm. you have... They yeah. really do. They have two levers and... Yeah. I, I, yeah, it, I, 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 don't, I don't disagree. Mm-hmm. I, I wish it could be cheaper, mm-hmm. but it can't. It, yeah. it, 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 it simply cannot be. And, in, and I would even propose that in the cases where they can make it cheaper, they do. Right. That is a lot of the tiered pricing structure here is saying, hey, you know what? Animal Kingdom is not filled up like the Magic Kingdom is a lot of times. So we're going to offer, you know, the the ticket to get into Animal Kingdom for for less money. Right. It's like that makes perfect sense. Right. It's like, yeah, there's four theme parks here. There's four humongous theme parks here that can eat a lot of people. And 
when you go to one and it's super crowded, which is usually the kingdom, because that is, like I said, the most heavily attended theme park in the universe, um, you know, 21 million people go to the kingdom every year. In the, in the universe? Well, yeah. The, the, the closest park to that is not even near it, right? It's like the closest park to that, I think, is Epcot, which has like, you know, 16 million or something a year. Um I, the numbers have gotten weird lately because of all the construction that I've got. So I'm not sure exactly what the final standings are. Other Some than of those people might've gotten yeah. lost in the construction wall maze, <laughs> but I'm just saying the, the magic kingdom is very, very popular. And of course it fills up and you can't lower prices because there's nothing, but they have been trying to do that in their other parks. They're trying to steer people towards <laughs> other places to go. Please go to Epcot yeah. Hollywood studios or animal kingdom. Please Come to animal kingdom. Look, take a safari ride, man. Chill out. There's lots of space. There's lots of things to do over here. Come Come, come over here. Um, yeah. It, Except it, it, there's not. All right. So I, I just wanted your reaction to that. I feel like maybe, as usual, I sidetracked us and derailed us, and I apologize. So so do, do we have time to talk about resellers? Yeah, we can try. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you wrote up the thing on this, so I'll, I'll let you uh, take the lead on this. So it's been talked to death on the Disney blogs and the Disney mm-hmm. Twitter and the Disney social media, but we just were looking for things to talk about and this popped into my head and I'm like, food and wine starts next week. Yes. You know what's going to happen on day number one of food and wine? Like all the really desirable merchandise will be sold out. No, it will not be sold out. It might sell out temporarily, but yes, the people with the large shopping bags and the (laughs) the, the strollers and the children and the family is going to stand in line at Creations for eight hours to get a t-shirt so they can flip it on eBay for three times the price. Have you ever wanted a piece of festival merchandise and you couldn't get it except for going on eBay and paying three times the price? Blame Disney resellers. Yeah. But the big question is, what the heck can Disney even do about them? So I, on the one hand, do blame the Disney resellers, but I also feel that there is a healthy amount of accountability that Disney is responsible for. Here. Oh, it, 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 uh, uh, responsibility, I, not accountability. I'm sorry. There's, there, the, Disney's responsible as well, is what I was trying to say. Right. Disney could, <laughs> yes. theoretically, nip mm-hmm. the problem in the bud if they wanted to. Yeah, this is this is the not question an unsolvable is, problem. Do they want yeah. to? Yeah. Do they? Disney makes their money regardless. Yeah. And I mean, you know, this is a solvable problem and you can say, well, how do they solve it? They can't just, you know, how do they know? They'll just get somebody else to come in and buy it. It's like there's it's very specific merchandise that these people target and it's unmistakable for these people to come up. To, what logical reason does anyone have? Uh, except in the rarest of instances, to buy two small shirts, two medium shirts, two large shirts, two extra large shirts, two triple extra large shirts, and all in the same style, uh, all at once. These are my two items per skew limit that I'm putting right here. Uh, Yeah, my entire family. We just happen to all (laughs) magically have these size ranges here, you know, that that equates to the maximum. My my six-year-old, who somehow has enough money to pay for this. Yeah. So, I mean, there's ways. Disney cast members are at their shops every day. They know who the resellers are. You could ask a cast member, they'll tell you who the resellers are because they see them there a lot. It's like uh, you and I go to the park often. Um, There are some cast members on property who would recognize us Mm -hmm. because they've seen us there before. So it's like cast members are people, they'll remember people that they see every day. Like if you're working in a a, a 7-Eleven, right? And some dude comes in every morning to get his coffee and donut, you're going to remember Hey, Bob. Yeah. Right. So I just feel like it's, it's not an insurmountable problem. That, that, and for people to pretend like, you know, well, there's just nothing they can do. It's like, there's a lot of things they could do. Uh, they don't necessarily want to do it because right now the resellers guarantee that they're going to sell their stock, right? And guarantee that they're, that's, that item is going to be, you know, they're not going to have leftover inventory that they're going to have to discount, right? These items are going to sell out and we don't have to do anything about it. We don't have to extra advertise, do extra, you know, promotions or whatever. Whereas if you stop the resellers from doing it, you're now, you know, what is the pattern of people coming into the theme park and will they buy this merchandise in the same way that these collectors will, right? So. I just feel like, you know, Disney doesn't necessarily want to do anything about it because they're not hurting in this equation, right? They, when, when people see those ridiculous prices on eBay, like a hundred dollars, uh, no, what was it? Like $150 for a pair of vans that should be $75. Um, you know, 
people get mad at at eBay or whatever. They don't get mad at at Disney. They're just like, oh, damn it, Disney. I don't want to. It's like you know, they're mad at this. So Disney doesn't get a lot of hate off of this. The resellers do. I don't know that Disney gets a lot of hate, but I think they deserve some. No, Disney, and th- th- that's the thing. Disney should get yeah. more responsibility because reselling is officially against the rules, at least for pass holders here mm-hmm. in the States. Um, if you use your annual pass to get your annual pass discount and then you flip a pizza, a pizza oh, yeah, flip <laughs> and a pizza. then you flip a piece of merchandise, mm-hmm. you have violated the terms of your annual pass and Disney can. Yes. Should. And sometimes does <laughs> revoke passes. Yes. From people who have done that. There have been a couple um, decently well-known resellers who have had their passes revoked mm-hmm. and or allegedly had their passes revoked yeah. and shut down their shops because Disney finally had enough and said, OK, yeah. if you buy this full price and flip it, we probably should care, yeah. but we don't. But since you used your annual pass and got a discount on it, screw you. You're done. And it looks like you're saying here that Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea have made uh, reselling just against the terms of the, Correct. the ticket. Sometime late last the year, they, uh, they put that into the terms of the ticket. If you buy a piece of merchandise with the intent to flip it, you are violating the terms of your ticket agreement. Yeah, and I feel like they could probably do that with annual pass. Yes, but the the big question again is how do you enforce it? Uh, Like I said, it requires a will for them to do it, right? Cast members know who the resellers are. The resellers are paying with the credit card, even if they're not using their annual pass discount, right? There's a name associated with that purchase. Right. That name could then be matched up to an annual pass and go, oh, by the way, this person, uh, you know, we see tapped into the style this day and this purchase was made. The names are the same. This is the credit card that goes with it. We're going to, uh, you know, revoke their pass because they... There's no possible way that they bought all these shirts. Right. For, I, I, I for, feel like one, so of the, could. one of the articles that I read, and you're welcome, during the research I was doing for this, I read more Inside the Magic, Disney <laughs> Dining, and other <laughs> clickbait bullshit yes. articles mm-hmm. just to get some background on some of these things. Um, so one of the things that I saw bandied about that I don't necessarily disagree with is make scanning your the QR code on the back of your pass. Yeah or your ticket, Mm -hmm. part of the transaction. Yeah. Your purchase history is linked. Disney knows what you buy, when you buy it, where you buy it. Yeah. But I think we even talked to a cast member once who said that the POS system Mm -hmm. and the merchandise inventory system or or the the, the purchase history system, those two systems don't interoperate and don't talk to each other. Yep. So that would be potentially a gargantuan undertaking to make those two systems talk to one another. Yeah, but I feel like that right but, there could put a uh, a big dent in it, right? And the, these are things that are doable, right? Right. It's like interoperability of systems. I mean, that's Disney has my a, job. <laughs> well, Disney has a, a a dev department, right? It's like you could write middleware to to bridge between two even two proprietary systems. It's like that's not something that's undoable. Um. Anyway, uh, I I also feel like. The, the the two per skew mm-hmm. needs to go away. For, yeah. For, for things. Oh, go ahead. No, that's, that's very akin, you know, it's a shotgun approach, right? right? It's like, it just doesn't to blanketly say, oh, well, you're limited to two items of the same skew. Um, that doesn't really do much, right? Because we ran into that with mystery boxes, which in order right. to get the full set of pins, right. for, you've for, got to be able to buy 10. For, for things like mystery blind bag mystery pins the old limit on those was 10 yeah and i feel like that is a fair limit right but for literally everything else Mm -hmm. two per person well i feel like again in in in, in a perfect world where where the systems talk to each other and (laughs) if you try if you scan your thing to purchase and you're trying to purchase a Mm -hmm. a bip bitty boppity boo t-shirt and you've already bought your two the cast member can and should be empowered to say no. Right. Then you 
you have pissy guests yelling at cast members, so I don't I mean, know that that's the always, best way to go about it. You but, can always overwrite it. Again, you're going to have to rely on your cast member, you know, who are in the stores every day. And right. who are, will some resellers get past it once or twice or get past it occasionally? Yeah, sure. But it will drastically cut down on what is happening. But I feel like the whole two item limit should be handled at the point of pricing, right? There's people go through and make those stickers that they put on each item inside the store, right? Disney prices things because they have an anticipated, uh, you know, popularity built mm -hmm. in, right? I'm going to charge $120 for the spirit Jersey because I know that this spirit Jersey is, you know, worth $120 to a lot of people, right? Even though it's just a freaking sweatshirt. Um, but, uh, you know, it's and worth, we sell a ton of them right. in but Florida. Then, so then you just build it into the pricing system, right? They say this item costs this much and it's limited. This item costs this much and it's limited. This item costs this much and it's open. It's right. like but for uh, your you for, yeah. for your generic Walt Disney World t-shirts. Yeah. If you want 50 of those, I don't care. There's 5 yeah. billion of them on the planet. Right. But the day that a new new MO comes out, there shouldn't be a, I think we're about to lose the, uh, camera. The camera. Yes. It's not, uh, anyway. <laughs> I just feel like uh, our camera got tired of us complaining about it. It's like the camera is just like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to shut off. You guys have said too much. All right. Uh, tell me, is there anything else you want to add about Disney resellers? No, it's a topic that's been done to death and will be done to death until Disney does something about it. Oh, it is uniquely Disney. Uh, if you have thoughts or comments about that, you want to let it, leave it uh, down below. If you're watching the video version of this, you can leave it down below in the comment section. If you are on a podcast, uh, uh, you know, audio only, listening to some podcatcher or watching our video on Spotify, then uh, you can always email us. It's don't do Disney at gmail.com and let us know what you think uh, about the reseller situation or the TikTok that we saw earlier. Just, I don't know, just reach out to us. Just say hi to us. We don't care. We're, we're, we need attention. We just, we need it. We need attention. It's very like important. You need attention. <laughs> okay. Uh, who is your hero and villain of the week? This is an odd episode, so I believe it is a villain, right? Yes. All right. So who is your villain of the week? Uh, my villain of the week was Disney resellers uh -huh. because food and wine starts next week and there probably is going to be some cool merchandise and I would really like to maybe get it. Yeah. But the festival goes on for four months, so I'm pretty sure anything that isn't limited is still going to be there up until the very end of the festival. Yeah. You said something that made me think I wanted to change my villain, but I don't actually remember who I wanted to change it to. So who's yours? Uh, my villain of the week is, I haven't really given this a lot of thought, so I'm just shooting from the hip here. It's uh, just the, the whole uh, interview that was done with Bob Iger the other day. People are teasing it apart. It was a CNBC interview. People are teasing it apart. Analysts are out there saying that Disney's going to sell off, sell off to Apple. And, and people report on this as if it was actual, like if, as if it Fact. was actually said, right? It's like, these things weren't said. Uh, and I, I just feel like, uh, you know, people are just running around. Like it is such a slow news period with Disney news right now that, Every piece of uh, news I see about Disney is just some imagined crazy thing that, you know, Disney is, uh, Disney's going to sell off ABC to Apple. And it's like, neither company. But, but are it. they? They might, but it's not been talked about. It's like, if it is, it's, you know, they're, uh, I don't know, who knows. And it, it, it wouldn't be that bad if they did. Like network TV is a dying uh, dinosaur. It's like for ABC, you know, for Disney to sell off ABC, I think is a good move. I think ABC is not going to make any more money than it does right now. It's like, it's not going to make more money in the future. Uh, anyway, uh, who's your hero of the week? Uh, my hero was my server Ray at the California grill oh. where I went last Saturday. Um, I was going to get my usual thing that I always get at California grill, even though they've changed the menu, which was a steak, but he talked me into, I did get the short rib wontons for my, uh, my appetizer, mm -hmm. but he talked me into the, uh, Blackened sea bass, which was very good. Okay. And uh, whatever I had for dessert. It was some kind oh, of- Oh, the white chocolate cherry creme brulee, yeah. which was very, very good. And you would approve because there, there were two little chocolate things that you could just mm -hmm. kick off to the side. Mm -hmm. There was no actual chocolate to be found that you couldn't take care of. <laughs> Uh, my hero of the week, again, I didn't think about this ahead of time. Uh, my hero of the week is you because you put together this outline of reseller stuff. Uh, because I was and waded through things. some terrible 
Clickbait. places yeah. that I never want to see again. All right. Well, if you would like to uh, reach out to us, we are on the socials. Uh, you can find all that information in our uh, description. Uh, we're we're, we're on, on every social. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Threads. Oh, we're on Blue Threads. Sky. Oh, um, we're on Threads now. Who are we on Threads? Just WDW d- d- Aristocrats. Uh, w- it's our Instagram login. So okay. it's WDW d- d- underscore, underscore Aristocrats. Yeah. Check us out over on the Threads. I've been app. thinking of possibly changing the handles on things but I can't it's there's branding there and I don't want to yeah, lose that it's so it's hard <laughs> uh, anyway uh, you can always reach out to us and uh, say hi we always appreciate it if you leave a comment on our YouTube channel uh, which is this podcast is also produced there so if you leave a comment there Zach will be happy to reply to it because I'm old and don't know how to use YouTube anyway um, until next time the only thing left for me to say right yes is to please 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 Don't do Disney without us.